What's up, true believers? The eternal truth. The eternal, eternal truth. truth. The eternal truth. Mm -hmm. What is up, true believers? It's Mason here with Comics and Crosses, where we discuss the eternal truths behind our modern mythology. And today, this is uh, Monday, February 28th, last uh, last uh, day of February, um, last day of um, Black History Month. Uh, <laughs> and, um, you know, it's been a good one. I'm looking forward to March. My birthday's in March, so, uh, you know, come on, March. And uh, today, um, I hope you had a good weekend. I hope you got all your comic books. I hope you got to read them. Um, I got to read some cool stuff. Uh, Action Comics, uh, the War World Saga, uh, Philadelphia from Rodney Barnes um, came out again. That's always a good one. Um, and, uh, you know, just some good stuff. But I wanted to have a really cool discussion. This is um, not my first time talking with a, a special guest I have today, but actually... Uh, Brent Trey Sands uh, is a guy that I met in Sacramento, where I lived previously, and um, and he uh, we'll we'll talk some more about it. I'll let you hear it from him. But man, I just had to reach out to this guy because he opened up his own basically comic shop, like for his his comic. You know, he he's a this is a creator owned property, uh, Impound Comics. You can go to ImpoundComics.com to check out his stuff. And um, the guy's just got big ambitions, and it's really cool because he takes um, his his material, his his characters, and he uh, has made video games. He actually is in the middle of his first comic convention, Comic Verse Sacramento, going on right now. And not only that, but a trailer is released today for Impound um, the movie. So. Um, if that sounds like a lot, it's because it is. It's because uh, it's it's cool. He he wants to attack every angle with his material. So I'm gonna bring up a friend of mine. Uh, welcome to the show, Mr. Uh, Brent Trace Sands of Impound Comics. What's up, brother? How you What's doing? Up, good, good, man. Hey, how's, how's it been going, in Texas? Oh, you know, Texas is uh it's it's different, but I kind of like it. It's a nice, easy flow. Um, I work from home, so I made my office set up the way I like it. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, nope. here, you didn't forget where you came from. No, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to represent. I actually, I, um, I should have had my Sacktown hero shirt on cause I got that too, oh. you know, but so <laughs> I, 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 I rep, uh, I rep not only Sacramento, but impound as well when I'm, when I'm around with that one. So, um, Absolutely. Yeah, so Brent, um, why don't you, uh, for those who are maybe new to you, um, why don't you just give a little uh, introduction to the world of Impound and all the different things that you got going on with Impound Comics? Uh, so Impound is a indie comic book company. Uh, we're based in Sacramento, California. Um, Impound is also the name of our main character. Originally, it was only supposed to be about him and then other opportunities and interests of other characters from supporters uh, branched it off and then just became a universe um, with multiple characters and villains and heroes. Um, and right now uh, we, we're launching the biggest milestone so far in the uh, company, and that's the Kickstarter to get funding for a live action movie. Um, so we shot the trailer. Um, it's pretty much a collective of Impound 1, 2, and 3. And uh, yeah. Need that budget, need that support from the public and from from everyone around the world, if possible. Yeah, that's really cool. Some people just try to get like a Kickstarter going for one comic book, but you've already managed to. What is it? Probably like six comics now, or somewhere more. Where we have eight comics and two yeah. children's books. Yeah, so you got the contents coming out, and then um, and actually going to try to um, film. And so you would film this in Sacramento, right? Yeah, most of it was filmed in like a 20 foot radius. So wow. we just mm -hmm. used every corner of an alley and a venue that was in the alley that we had access to. Mm -hmm. 
That's cool. So who did you tell me about who'd you reach out to when you thought I, I'm going to try to make a trailer or a film, you know, version of impound. Uh, well, so the director is a guy named Mikey Rare. Uh, we were already friends and I've done a lot of work together previous before impound was even a thing. Um, so that was an easy transition because like I said, we were already friends. Uh, he already knew what I was doing. So there wasn't much of a pitch necessary there. Um, the guy who plays impound is someone I went to Sac State with. And um, when I was in the planning process of it, uh, he just so happened to walk past my store. So it was like, all right, this is meant to be because here he is randomly. <laughs> yeah. Right when I decided I want to reach out to him and, and do it. So the other characters are friends. And then uh, our nemesis was also just a, another person that just randomly walked into the store. Um, and uh, he just looked like my villain. And then uh, I just asked him, would he be willing to play? And he said, yeah. So here we are, man. Uh, it was probably about two months of actual planning and then like another month and a half of editing. Um, and, and now we're ready. And so since you, you found people that, you know, uh, at least it was the second guy that looked the part, did, is there a lot of dialogue in the trailer? Or did you did you have to there's like, not that much. did you have to like direct? No, there's it? not a lot of dialogue. There's not a lot of dialogue because of the reasons that um, everyone wasn't like a, a true actor. Yeah. Um, the, the character playing Impound really does act. So he had dialogue scenes, but everyone else, I couldn't really um, put that much pressure on him with no previous acting experience, you know? Yeah. So we didn't shoot it with a lot of dialogue intentionally um, and, and more so put like some narrative and, and uh, things like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But actually, louder than words if you would say it mm. yeah because I, I mean i've been in film school and try to get sometimes friends or people to act and well and uh, one thing is just if they can do it or not if they can sound good and another thing is yeah. people don't realize the amount of effort and work that goes into making film shooting you know like i yeah. i would see i would see people who are trying to act for fun melting down by the end of the day like man don't we have the shot yet? Like, <laughs> now one thing I would say, we definitely had a good cast though. Awesome. You know, for for pretty much, uh, no one had to really like get replaced, or no one, not, there was no rescheduling. Um, everyone was there when they needed to be there, and uh, we got it done in the time frame that we planned. So, um, as far as the people I worked with, there was everyone was perfect um, on that front. And how was it like shooting in Sacramento? Were you having to like, were you guerrilla shooting or were you getting permits or how, how complicated was that? You're a guerrilla, guerrilla shooter. We ain't got time for all that. <laughs> <laughs> City yeah. of Sacramento, Sacramento doesn't even probably even have a department that deals with like permitting for shooting and stuff like that. It's, it's just not a thing out here. If we were in Los Angeles, you know, it'd be different. Like there's people actually patrolling, looking for that. But I don't think... I, Unless we were trying to shut down streets and things like that, you know, they probably just assume we're shooting like a music video, something that's like normal, you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, and you you come from a kind of the music scene background in Sacramento too, right? Planning events. Yeah. In your business. Yeah, so promoting, you know, I was in. I, I graduated with a degree in film, um, but yeah, club concert promoting and uh, uh, artist management. Uh, was what I was doing uh, before Impound. And it's still what I'm doing, but it just kind of has different goals now. Uh, for example, like Comic Verse, you know, I did an event like a Comic Verse, but it was it was catered towards shoes uh, several years ago. And uh, it's the same idea. So it wasn't like any hard change other than what the theme is, you mm -hmm. know. But now everything I promote, everything I do, I wanted to somehow promote Impound at the same time. Yeah, definitely. So you feel like yeah. um, your background kind of has given has has given you. I feel well, just from the outside looking in, I feel like your background being a little different has given you a lot more tools than the typical comic creator has. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. That's it's it's a hundred percent the biggest engine of our businesses. Uh, no one just knows how to get the word out better than I do. You know, there's other dope creators in Sacramento, um, but I would say. Um, this business is tough for most people because most people in it are introverted people. Um, they're not really like social people. And so that is alone a big advantage of the fact that, you know, my whole life and following was built on social media. 
So uh, that makes that makes it easier in this business. That's a good point. That's a good point. Would you consider yourself like naturally an introvert, or are you naturally outgoing? I'm naturally outgoing, you know. So I, I it's it wasn't, you know, I, I, my degree is in communications. Do you know what I mean? So it's just like communicating just was natural, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good thing. I think you got a lot of good skills that are uh, really like elevating Impound Comics and the whole brand. Um, yeah, and then just promoting, just getting different tools and, you know, working with artists, getting the word out on music. Everything just came back full circle, you know. Mm -hmm. So how is the um, so how is the comic verse Sacktown going? Like what is how is this first experience been? I mean, obviously you have the background in it, so you felt a little comfortable, but um, this is like, you're like home field now. This is, you know, impounds thing. Anytime you throw an event, as long as people buy tickets, I'm perfectly okay with everything else. You know, like the setup, the breakdown, that's nothing. Yeah. Um, getting people in the building is the scariest part of it. So yeah. once they're there, it's not even pressure anymore, you know? Yeah, that's cool. And so what are you doing to uh, promote impound? Like, um, is there any kind of special things that you're doing there for Impound to show it off, to show off the, the all the work? With Comicverse? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. The whole the flyer is our character, Alina. Um, we we put it's, it's uh, curated by Impound on every ad, every post. Um, we have our own vendor booth, you know. Uh, for people with VIP, they get Impound gifts. Uh, so it's 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 right behind the, the comic verse brand. Mm -hmm. So the presence of Impound is very, very felt uh, with this convention. We even had the live action movie trailer like banner uh, in the comic verse, like saying it drops tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, nice. That's cool. Um, well, that's the whole point. What's that? I'm saying that's the whole point of it. If it's, if it's not promoting Impound, I'm not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Well, that's cool. And so you have um, also some uh, different, I've noticed just a real like uh, diversity of characters, you know, that are coming out that have their books in your comic line. So you got like female characters, you got, you know, the villains, you got the impound. And so um, what, what would you say like in inspires you to do a new character that we haven't seen? Like, why do you keep bringing out these these new characters in the impound line? Because uh, if I was waiting for only Impound, it would be too much time in between waiting for the next book. Um, some of them were asked about by other people. But, you know, it's just a whole universe. You know, we're just trying to introduce as many characters as we can, see what catches. But really, the, re the, the reason why I started doing other, other books was because I couldn't just wait for only Impound 1, 2, 3. But we're only up to Impound 3 as we speak. so that would have been too much too, that, that would have let too much time go off you know what i mean so you know my strategy is to turn over every stone and and keep having new things so um we had to you know and, but we're we're also doing it in a way that's natural you know they're all tied into each other um one way or another and uh it's all it's just the same universe yeah absolutely yeah and that's fun that gives people Kind of, I think if you were to find just one comic and feel like, oh, you, it's it's good to see that there's more things for you to get into and more places to go with yeah. this whole world. And then there's gonna be some people who read the Impound book and don't really care for it, but maybe they love the Lady Monarch book. You know, just like anything, just because you like Marvel doesn't mean you like every character in it. So yeah. trying to make different characters for different walks of life, different people. Now, would you say, like, do you feel like, um, you know, maybe not, maybe you're just telling stories that make sense to you, but do you feel like your characters are meant to be inspirational? Um, no, I would say no. Uh, I wasn't really doing them with that purpose necessarily. Um, it's more of just putting together stories that make sense. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, there's always going to be a certain amount of inspiration for people that can relate. Um, so maybe parts of this character's life or what this character believes in. Um, certain times, yes, though, at the same time. Like like Seraph, uh, 
I made him from the Philippines. And the reason why I made him from the Philippines was because my illustrator who was create, helping me create him is from the Philippines. Oh, okay. Also on top of that, you know, uh, Sacramento has a massive Filipino population. So that did kind of weigh in a factor of the fact that, you know, uh, we, uh, I think as an African-American male, I, most African-Americans will tell you there's not enough African-American characters highlighted. And that also goes for other ethnicities. So that was my reasoning on that. Um, Lady Monarch, you know, I did kind of, there isn't really anyone, not too many characters that I can think of that are f black female characters that aren't secondary. You know what I mean? Like when you think of like, who's probably the most famous black female hero? Probably Storm. And she's not even really like number three in X-Men. Yeah. Like she's really kind of far down the lineup of importance of the characters. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and then like after that, you know, maybe what? Sherry, who's also secondary to Black Panther. You yeah. know what I mean? So so I wanted I wanted a strong, dominant black female hero. You know, where it's it, this is about her. She is the protagonist hundred percent, you know, not just secondary in someone else's story. Yeah, you know, I I I noticed that with Lady Monarch and even that she's a social media like influencer person and and it made me think that like you know, cuz a lot of these comic book characters that we know from Marvel or DC have been around a long long time and you almost feel like there's not really truly modern like characters, especially women. Like you don't see like a modern yeah. woman. So I thought, wow, you know, you're right there in the urban setting of Sacramento downtown and you know and to see I'm like Lady Monarch, like that's truly like, I feel like a modern, like today kind of character. Um, yeah, that's, that feels like how, you know, a young female of any ethnicity may be, you know what I mean? In, in this generation, you know, I think, I think majority of young women uh, spend some amount of time trying to go viral on social media, uh, yeah. rather it's a priority or not. Uh, I think everyone in the back of their mind wants to go viral. You know what I mean? At some point. Yeah. And if it did, it would become their job, you know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was, I definitely did that on purpose. I uh, was making it as modern as possible. Yeah. And it's funny because I asked the original question because to me, I, I feel like uh, your characters do seem inspirational. Like I see, and like you said, maybe it's because I identify because like with Impound, uh, I'm not a single dad, but I am a dad. And like, so yeah. I see him fighting and trying to make a way, you know, make it work out for him and his, you know, his daughter. And, and, uh, and, and that seems inspirational to me, you know, like, yeah. I think good stories just ends up being inspiring, yeah. you know, but I would definitely say when I was writing it, I wasn't conscious of trying to be inspiring. I was just more conscious of trying to make a story that makes sense. And I would just think of things like that makes sense. That's, uh, no, I don't know about that. And really, um, I just wanted it. There's also a certain level of darkness that I enjoy in storytelling. So what could be the worst thing possible to happen to this character is also something I do. Um, you know what I mean? So it's it's. I think it's inspiring because it was well put together. Um, but I wasn't writing it necessarily to be inspiring. Yeah. Um, it just ended up that way, you know, and I'm happy that that's the... Uh, the vibe that a lot of people get from them. Yeah, and I think you you hit it right on the head in that, you know, good stories are going to be inspirational because good stories involve conflict that needs to be overcome. Like there needs to be progress in a story. We're just not watching people sit around and think about life, you know. So, um, yeah. so that's really cool. So um, February 28th now is is the day that you're releasing the um the trailer the full trailer that you created for for impound for the movie and this is going to be to get momentum towards funding the kickstarter campaign for the film itself right yeah in a perfect world we get picked up by a network and have enough money to do an indie you know um if anything it's it's a move into the right direction you yeah. know um so that's I don't see any scenario where we don't get a good amount of funding. I think we did a really good job of not just me, just our, our team in general of coming up with great innovative ways of making sure the word is out. Um, but, you know, honestly, until the campaign's over, I won't know how much funding we have, but uh, 
that's it, it's a step in the next direction. We're gonna get some sort of cinematic adaptation of Impound uh, after this for sure, though. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I mean, even if you made a um, a pilot episode for something that could get picked up, and then it was a show or something like right. that, well, that could be cool. Um, Absolutely. And, and when so when does like the when would the campaign end? Like, what's the window for people to support you to get involved? Um, so it started today on the 28th, and then it ends on the 29th of March. Okay. So like a 30-day time One period. Day is, yeah. Yeah. Not that I'm telling you to wait till the end, but I just want you to know that this thing does run out, so you should get involved uh, now that it's open and now that you have a chance to get involved. And for that, do they do they go to uh, impoundcomics.com, or is there another URL they want to go to? Well, it's on Kickstarter, uh, so you can search us on Kickstarter, but it is also on the homepage of our personal website. Uh, if that's easier, yes, go to impoundcomics.com. Okay. Um, if you see or if you're on our Instagram, just click the link in our bio. Okay, perfect. Yeah. And then also I'll put that link in the description here of the video so you guys can click on it and check out, see the, the campaign, see what's involved in it, what you get, and, and how you get to be a part of that process. Um, okay. And then um, I am... So obviously we're trying to get a movie made here, but uh, what else is in the future? Is there anything else? Are you like like really locked in on getting this movie made right now? Uh, I would definitely say the movie is the most important thing on our uh, list right now. Um, but we're also coming out with an animated um, adaptation of Inbound, so that's that's a one hundred percent in the works right now. Cool. We're probably about six seven minutes into animating. Um, yeah, so that for sure is coming as well. I think that, you know, um, down the line, you're just going to have to create like a studio, like a whole like, you know, yeah. with all the connections and contacts that you've made and the whole, you've probably seen all these, all these content creation processes A to Z. So maybe that's in the future for you. No, absolutely. That's definitely a goal of it. To have just a whole studio that we don't need outside anything. We just do it all ourselves. Yeah. Awesome. Brilliant. Cool, man. Well, I appreciate you coming by the show today. I, um, uh, like I say, I'm always like impressed to see all the things that you're doing and all the cool stuff that's happening in Sacramento, which no longer my hometown, but it still has a special place in my heart. And uh, yeah, man, so just keep up the good work. Keep uh, pressing the boundaries of what uh, what you can do with your creativity. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you for having me on. Okay. All right, guys. So definitely go to impoundcomics.com. I'll put the link in the description for the Kickstarter as well so that you can support it. You can be a part of this and actually see it go from the trailer, which you can watch now, all the way to a full feature film that's going to be, uh, I think, going to be pretty sweet, especially for those of us that are in the Sacramento area to really see that, that come to life right in your own backyard. So uh, thanks again, Brent. I appreciate it. Thank you, brother. Take care.